All right, uh, side picture. Today's scopes, lots of parts on them. We're going to not talk about the uh, internal adjustment for elevation or wind. We're just going to talk about how the scope's set up and how we can see through it. Starting from the back of the scope, we've got the ocular lens. Defined by the lens that's closest to your eyeball. What this does in all these scopes that are modern, you'll see that they typically have a locking ring back in the back. You can loosen up that locking ring and this ocular lens will turn. The only thing that the ocular lens, the adjustment on the ocular lens is for, is the reticle crispness. Just to make sure that the reticle is nice and crispy as soon as you look through it. To adjust that, once the scope's mounted, put your eye behind the rifle. Look at something neutral, white background sky, whatever it is, not the sun. But look at it and look immediately. Is the reticle nice and defined and nice and crispy? If it's not, take your face away, make some adjustments, then look again. Whenever you get it to that point to where the reticle is nice and crispy, you got it going. It's the same thing, you're just setting the diopter for your eye. Same thing when you go into the doctor's office and he has those little lenses, one, two, better, worse, better, worse. That's all you're doing on that. Once it's done, lock it in, you're good to go. Moving forward here, left knob, parallax knob, focus knob, a lot of different names for it, but actually it is parallax. What parallax simply does is it brings the target and the reticle inside the scope onto the same focal plane. Simply put, your reticle will be nice and crispy and your target will be nice and crispy. A couple ways to test for that, but we'll talk about that later. Again, objective lens, last item, objective lens closest to your target. Okay, sight picture. We talked about the ocular lens. Another important part of the ocular lens is actually where you're gonna adjust your eye relief for the scope. Whenever you're adjusting eye relief, what you're looking to get is that when immediately, when you put your eye behind the optic, you don't have shadowing around all sides, like, like looking through a donut hole, something like that. If it is uh, all the way around <clears throat> that shadowing, it means one of two things. Either your eyeball is too far away from the optic or your eyeball is too close. Mounting the scope, you'll notice Picatinny rail gives you the option to where you can move the scope forward, you can move it back, but what you want to do is you want to have the rings positioned on the scope to where you do have that ability to go back and forth with it. I'll set this here and just kind of hand tighten the rings. Then what I'm looking for, as soon as I lay my eye behind the optic, I've got a clear image from side to side. Again, don't test this the way I'm testing it right now. Test it prone when you're out on the range or, <clears throat> or setting it up at your house. Another thing, some uh, stocks will have the ability to come in and out with the uh, adjustable comb here. You can see this one, I can adjust it where it is. I'll put in a lock ring to it and I can adjust where my face actually fits on the scope. That to me is a little bit too high. I'm getting shadowing at the top. What that simply means is if I have shadowing at the top, what I'm seeing is I'm seeing the bottom of the optic. In other words, my eye is too high here, so I'm not looking down the center of the scope. Eye is too high, get shadowing on the top, I'm seeing the bottom of the tube. I want to adjust this down some. Looks about right. Have it where it needs to be. And I can come in and lock this in. Now, if you don't have the ability, let me unlock this. If you don't have the ability with the adjustable cheek piece, there's a lot of different products you can get out there that will somewhat build up the, uh, the comb area. Don't get too crazy about that either. Frank, if you get it close on the face here. If I am down here, I'm obviously, my eyeball is not directly down the center line of the scope. That's what's called a real good cheek wall, right on the bone here of your face. If it turns out, that you have to come a little bit higher, don't sweat it, it doesn't matter. If you don't have the ability to adjust this, that's fine. It's just about muscle memory anyway. As you can see here, it's lower on the face than it is here. Either one is gonna be just as accurate. Again, talking about this, if it turns out that I don't necessarily have a cheek weld, but I'm a little bit lower on the face, it really doesn't matter. What we're not, what we don't have is we're not dealing with iron sights to where we're talking about sight alignment. What we're talking about is sight picture. So if I have to come in, put my face on the gun exactly like that, and I'm a little bit higher than what my cheekbone is, I'm not really gonna sweat it too much. One of the things that's gonna help us solve that problem, again, parallax knob. Parallax knob basically put on there so you could focus at different ranges, but another additional benefit of it is that you don't really have to have 
the exact cheek weld every single time. That parallax knob will give you the ability to adjust the scope for some sort of awkward position that you may be in. All right, going back to it. Obviously, we want a consistent cheek weld every single time. If it turns out that we're down on our cheekbones in this fashion, that's fine. If we're up here, that's fine too. However, if we do find ourselves in a position that's not really gonna allow that, we can utilize the parallax knob to take out the parallax and it will kind of make the scope more forgiving, modern optics. Simply come in, I'll look at my target, I'll set my reticle up exactly where I need it to be. I'll bag in the rifle as tight as I possibly can then, if you watch closely, I'll move my head slightly side to side. Now, I'm not moving my head enough to where I start to get shadowing one side or the other. But what I'm watching is I'm watching the reticle. If the reticle stays where I left it, on the target, that means I'm parallax free. However, when I move my head, if the reticle floats, then I know I still have parallax in here. I'll have to come up here, make a slight adjustment to the parallax knob. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for the reticle not to float on the target. Again. Ocular adjustment is just for the reticle itself. That's all. Once that's set, it's set. It doesn't matter at any range. Then, whenever ranges change, I essentially have to come over and work the focus knob, the parallax knob. I can adjust that as I shoot at different ranges. Obviously, if I have multiple targets at multiple ranges, I'll find a common ground, some sort of middle area where it'll work. But what this will do, this knob will take away some shooter error if I'm not exactly able to get a perfect cheek weld every single time. Multiple reasons for that. It could be the position that I'm in, whatever I'm using for cover, whatever I'm using to rest the rifle. The, there's a multitude of reasons why I can't get that perfect, consistent cheek weld every single time. It's irrelevant. Use the scope, modern optics, to solve some of those problems for you. All right, a lot of talk on the board concerning length of pull and how to set up the rifle to fit you. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to get too wrapped around the axle about it. It's kind of simple. Length of pull typically defined as the distance between the buttstock and the trigger. That's what we're looking for right there. A lot of times people will measure from, say, the end of the outside of the elbow up to the trigger finger like that, or uh, in some fashion maybe thinking it's from here to here. That's really not the case. What we need to do is we need to figure out what the distance is from here to here. We're going to build our position from the trigger back. The buttstock itself, yeah, we're holding it into the shoulder pocket, but really what our idea is is to get our hand in a position to where we can shoot the gun correctly. We've all talked about 90 degree on the angle. If you can see this, what happens whenever I get this rifle set up the way I have it, I got my 90 degree, the rifle's going to sit right there in the crook of my elbow. Not really to the bottom, but from the base of the bicep all the way up to the trigger. That's kind of what we're looking for. Hey Starsky, let's get both arms out there. <laughs> some of that cover. Don't drop the weapon, bring it into you. We talk about that in loop. Don't do this. Bring it in just a little bit. There you go, and then you can punch straight out. Look at that. Slow down. Come on, Count. Come on, Ring. Oh fuck, he's coming at you. Slow down the foot. Nice hit. You're good. You're good. Go ahead. I'm good. Nah, yours is. I just to sit around nice. and review. Yours is for way more important shit than that. YouTube. That's more important? What's <laughs> up, bitch? Covering. Covering! Quickly, quickly. Ceasefire! 